Hi and welcome. My name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about creating a slideshow, exporting it as a video and uploading it to YouTube as a movie. Now this is a very compelling way of showing off your work. Now it requires some narrative or some music. Now I recommend you use music because that doesn't require you going to a video editing program like Premiere Pro. Anyway, let's get started. How did I go about selecting my images? Well, you can go about anyway. It's entirely your choice, but I used attribute under the filter bar and picked anything that's one star or greater. Now, if you're not sure where your filter bar is, just come up to view and show filter bar. And I picked one star or greater. Now, star rating images is very quick. As you probably know, you just got to press a key between one and five. So that's two star, one star, etc. Once I did that, the important thing was I went to collections and this is very important and I created a collection. I gave it the name for slideshow, which is down here. Once you have a collection, what you can do, you can add to it or delete from it without affecting the catalog. So in other words, if you delete something from a collection, you're not deleting it from your catalog or from your system. You're only deleting it from the collection. That's very important to understand. What I did next was I cropped to 16 to 9 because on YouTube, here's the help page in YouTube. It says you've got to use a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. Now, it just happens that the slideshow module export video button will export at 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080. Now, most of us have cameras that can far exceed that size. But the important thing is you don't crop below that size. Now, most of my images were absolutely fine, but I had a problem because any black bars that are put on uh, because the images are not fitting the aspect ratio are put on by Lightroom. Now, if you do any, any other method, YouTube will put the black bars on. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's go back to the YouTube help page and just scroll down a bit. Now, if you do it the wrong way, YouTube adds the black bars. When you do it via the slideshow module in the export video facility, the black bars are added by Lightroom. So, as I said, most of my images were far larger than 1920 by 1080. Now, if I press R on my keyboard, which is the keyboard shortcut for crop, I should go straight to the crop tool from the library. Now, when it shows up, you can see I've got 16 to nine there. The image size here, the sizes are the crop dimensions, which are 4272 by 2403, far larger than 1920 by 1080. The problem I had when I did a test run that some of these images, despite being larger than 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080, they had black bars created by Lightroom. I believe it was a bug in Lightroom. Now it affected roughly 20 of 105 images. Now I had to bite the bullet and change my crops to make them larger. Now I still kept the aspect ratio, but it did annoy me and I believe it's a bug in Lightroom. So you might come across it. Back to the grid as part of the library module. I also, under Quick Describe, there's other ways of doing this, added in a title here. So the title would give the slideshow context because I'm going to overlay the title on each slide. So I added a title in and that will show up on each slide and I'll show you that in a minute. So everything done here and the few glitches I had with 16 to nine, etc. Everything is now working as far as I'm concerned. Now I had to do trial and error to get to this point. So it can be frustrating. All I have to do now, make sure my collection is showing, go to the slideshow. Whatever's showing up in the grid view when you go to the slideshow is, is what you see. So if you had all the catalog showing, you'll have all of the catalog inside the slideshow module. So the great thing about having collections which show up in every module that you've always got access to your images. Slideshow. Now you'll see that title showing up there now. I'm going to delete that because I want to show you how I put it on there. Starting from the left hand side, there are templates. Now, if you play around these sliders and like what you see, you can save it as a template here and give it a name. I've already done that. I've created one called YouTube 1080p. Now, if I click that, it will negate me showing you what I did to reach this point. Options. Now, most of this is about borders and I don't want borders on my 
slides because I've made a lot of effort to crop them to 16 to 9. Why would I want a border? Now, I realize a border has some artistic potential, but from my point of view for this video, I don't want any borders on my image. I want the whole uh, available screen, you know, the movie screen in YouTube to be taken up by my slide. So zoom to fill frame means if it's too small to sharpen this frame, it will be zoomed in or artificially made larger. That will degrade the image. No, I don't want that. Stroke border, where well, you can put stroke on. No, I don't. Car shadow, no, I don't. Let's close options down. You don't need it. Now you can put a border on here. You can link them or unlink them, etc. I don't want a border. Now it might work for you in other scenarios, but for a YouTube video, why would you create a border? Because YouTube will put a border on if you don't have 16 to 9 aspect ratio or the image is too small. So I don't want borders. Now, aspect preview. Now, I'm not sure what the impact is when you come to export the video here. So I'm keeping it on 16 to 9. What is important are the overlays. Now, the only reason they're important for me is I want to add some text. Now, identity plate. Well, yes, it will add that. Watermarking, no, I don't like watermarking. Rating the stars, well, I can show, have my star rating showing up there. That's very personal to me, so I don't want that showing. Text overlays, as I said, I wanted some context for this slideshow, so I'm going to have a small amount of information showing. Once you've ticked that, nothing happens until you press this. Now, what I would do then, I'm not gonna bother showing you the other um, facilities here. I'm just gonna click on title. And I've got the, the name of the area where I took the shot from. Now, if you don't live on the Isle of Wight, spelt W-I-G-H-T, off the south coast of England, this probably won't mean much to you. But it gives it some context. So, you know, people who do know the Isle of Wight will understand what's going on. But you need to have some form of context. The music, which I'm going to place on, will help the video. In fact, it will really make the video, but you need some context. You need a bit of a story. So on this occasion, I'm not gonna drown out the image with text. It's just a very short, pithy title. And I had to put this on 105 images, so it was a bit of work. Anyway, the way you make the text smaller is by just by dragging in any one of these handles. It's not like Photoshop where you have to press the shift key or any modifier key, you just drag it in. Now I think that's about the right size. The problem I know that will happen is as these are different size images, but still 16 to nine, you've got to be careful where you place it. If you place it too low, it'll end up like that. So I kind of place it a third in. I think that's about right. I am going to make it bold and I'm going to add a shadow. I'm not going to play around the shadow sliders. I'm adding a shadow because it's on a green background at the moment, but it could be on a white background. Right, that done. Now I'm going to go to titles. Now you can have the intro slide show up with your identity plate like this. No, and the ending slide as well. I'm not interested in that. Honestly, I'm not, guys. It could prove useful, but personally, there's a lot of other places on YouTube you can put this information. So I'm not going to waste people's time by showing up nameplates, etc. I'm not interested. Music, now this is really important. Now most music is copyrighted and any music on your system, almost I guarantee it is copyrighted. Now I happen to have access to non-copyrighted music on my system. And this I believe is because the owner of the copyright didn't bother registering it with YouTube, let's say, or Google or whatever, or any other agency, and I'm stealing his music, but I'm only going to use it in this context when I press preview or play. When I come to export the video down here to YouTube, I won't have any music because when I get to YouTube, I'm going to add the music. That's very important because you have a lot of um, music to pick from. Some of it ad free and some of it ad supported. Now, all ad supported means is it's copyrighted music where the owner is allowing you to use it. And when you use it, whether you like it or not, an advert will be placed on your movie and the revenue from that advert will go to the copyright holder of the music. Now, it's a minefield, this. Now, at one time, if Google caught you, which is YouTube, caught you using copyrighted music, they might give you a strike and three strikes and you have your account deleted. Now, if you're serious about YouTube, you don't really want your account deleted. So beware of what music you're using. Some artists will say, fine, you can use my music, but the advert money will go to me. Some artists will say, 
don't use my music at all. And if you use their music, what happens? Google searches around every movie that's placed on its site and actually will find out that you're using copyrighted music. They're clever people, these people. And what they will do is give you a strike or the very least delete the music from your video. They are becoming more conciliatory in recent years, but be careful. That said, let's get on. So I've got some music here. You can see it's going to be 11 minutes and six seconds of music. Now, I'm going to click off this gold cliff here because in the corner, and it's very small, this video currently is 13 minutes and 58 seconds. Now, it's also governed by slide length and crossfades, etc. And the music is 11 minutes and six seconds. So the music doesn't fit the video, but what happens here is it will repeat the music. So if you've got access to non-copyrighted music, you can just put one tune on, which will repeat if it's smaller in length or time than the actual video time. Anyway, let's get started. I'm going to close that down now. The important one is the playback. Now, if you go to manual, you'll see a message about manual mode does not support these settings. I never use manual mode. Automatic is fine. Sync slides to music. If you had a strong beat, the slides would transition or change according to the beat of the music. You can control that bias towards the music or to the video down here. I'm not going to use it on this occasion, and this very likely that it would be useful to someone who's got action shots, etc. But for me, who, who, who shoots landscapes and wants some ambient music, this is not going to work. Slide length, very important. Now, if you increase the slide length, you'll automatically see the time go up down here. Now, this is not a very good user interface, so you've got to really search around to find these things. And it was trial and error for me. So eight seconds, I think, is about right. But I think if you go over 15 minutes with this type of video, you're pushing your luck. Now, if the music's good and the, the photographs are good, the images are good, you might get away with it if you go above 16 minutes, but I don't recommend that you do. I, you know, I'm looking for around 15 minutes or maybe 14. Now, if, if it was too long, I would just delete some of these slides. I wouldn't play too much with slide length because I would say to you that six seconds is the minimum you can take it down to, providing, you know, it, it fits that sort of ethos that I'm looking for, like a landscape. Now, if you've got action shots that you want to change quickly, of course, you can drop it down to three seconds or whatever, and it might very well work. From my point of view, it's not going to work at anything less than six seconds. So I want it to around... 14 minutes so i'm going to bring it down slightly here so i've got it down to eight seconds and it says 16 minutes i don't want to bring the cross crossfades down too low and crossfades just means how it transitions from one slide to the other it's like a smooth transition so i think 1.1 is as low as i want to go now i've got it down to 1337 i could probably drag this up slightly up to there 1358 i'm not going to play around too much as I said, audio balance is about sync slides to music, etc. I'm not interested. Pan and zoom, I really love. Now, what I would say about pan and zoom is you don't want it too high if your slide length isn't that high because what will happen is you won't see the whole image because the panning and zooming is trying to work and if the slide changes, you've lost part of your image. So it's a big trade-off. All you've got to do is press preview or play to see what's going on. And I'm going to show you one important thing here. Make sure quality is on high, because when you come to export the video and upload it to YouTube, if you don't have it on high, you'll get a 420p video or something ridiculously awful, and it won't work. So you need to have it on high. Repeat slideshow, no. Random order, no. Preview. Preview will render the slides and keep all the panels uh, visible. You can hear the music playing. It's panning in on the shot. And it's panning out to the next shot. So the pan and zoom isn't that strong. And I've got it roughly about, I would say, 40% there. But roughly just over a third of the way in. I quite like that. You get to see the whole image. And it's changing reasonably quickly. Yeah, I quite like that. Now, if I press play... The whole screen will go over now to being a proper slideshow player. The thing is, most of these images are 4,000 uh, pixels on their longest edge. My screen is 5K, which by the way means 5,000 pixels at least on its longest edge. That's why I've got borders. Anyway, that said, 
the escape key will take you right back out to where you need to be. Now, as far as I'm concerned, everything is fine here. Now, I could come across and create a template because I've got these sliders right and just go create a new template and have it available. Now, if I wanted to get really clever, what I could do is create a saved slideshow. And what that will do is remember all of these photographs you have here and all of your settings. So, you know, it operates independent of the collection. So I'm going to create a saved slideshow now. Now, automatically prompts you to put it inside of for slideshow. Um, because that's my original collection, but it is independent. Though it, if you're ticking that box, all it's doing is put it down in the hierarchy, but it's not affected by four slideshow. So it operates independently, but I'm going to leave it there now and just put four test here. I've got one showing already called demo and you can see it showing up now. Now these are output collections. They're related entirely to uh, the slideshow module. You can see the slideshow icon there. If I went back out to the grid now and double clicked on this, I come to the slideshow module with all these photographs ready and all the settings right. So this is a very powerful way of working. You can always go back to your slideshow. As I said, I don't think you should have your slideshows longer than 15 minutes. And even then, you've got to be really careful. This is landscape stuff with ambient music I hope to put on it, and hopefully it'll work. As I said, I'm not going to have the music on it. So all I have to do, I can add more music in if I wanted to, but all I can do here is click on it and delete it off. So I'm going to do that now. Now, everything is fine as far as I'm concerned. I've got my title on. So everything's going to work. All I have to do now is export a video. Give it a name, decide where I'm going to save it on my system, and choose a preset. Now, 1080p is what I talked about, and that's what you should save your slideshow app. Eventually, because most of us have cameras that can support 4K, it will go up to 4K. For the time being, that's the best you can get, and it'll still be pretty good because most of the world, you know, hasn't gone into 4K yet. I'm going to export it and it'll be fine, I'll be on my system, ready for uploading to YouTube. Over to YouTube. When you come to your homepage, you've got a Google account, there's an upload button here, there are other places to upload. I'm gonna upload from here, because most of the effort starts now. Right, select the files to upload. I recommend you make it unlisted, which means the public can't see it. You can make it private as well and change that later, whatever, but I don't recommend making it public. Find your file, you'll see a progress bar, and when you're finished, you'll see a link. of Providing you've exported it properly and done everything properly, and especially had the settings on high in the slideshow here, down there on the quality, it should work fine. Right, back to YouTube. I've done all my work. Now, I've done this already for a few videos, uh, I've done with slideshows. What I need to do now is come to my video manager. When you're here, you're seeing all your public stuff. I need to see the stuff that's not also public. So I'm coming to video manager, see all my videos. So I'm going to edit here. I'll click on edit. I could pick just audio, etc., but just click on edit. If I click on monetization, which allows you to gain revenue from any adverts on your movie. So I can't monetize this video now because it matched third party content. Now, I'm not telling me off because I actually got the music from YouTube. So that's just a heads up there. Anyway, audio. Now we'll see that I've already got that track on there called Return to Home. Now I can change this track, but I actually really love this chat, but I'm going to go for the process of showing you, um, let this music start. So I'm going to show you what the music sounds like. It's beautiful. It suits a landscape a slideshow very well. Because to show you what you need to do to find the music you want, it's a bit convoluted. Now, what you need to do is search. Let's say you use ambient, whatever you like. Now you'll see everything that YouTube has available, which is advertising free, i.e. you can put your own adverts on, you know, allow your allow your video to show adverts, which you can gain money from, which YouTube called monetization. Now, these are all free. If I find something here, and it's possible I could do, but I would say it's more likely that you won't because this is free music. And uh, as I say, <laughs> 
And this is only two minutes, 57 seconds long as well. Now I'd have to find something. I'm going to stop that now because it's irritating me. I would have to find something that is, is very nearly 14 minutes and 13 seconds long. The reason being is you can only put one track on. That's it. So it needs to fill up your video unless you want long bouts of silence. Now, if I pick that one there, if I'm in position, you'll see that it only takes up that length of the video until it reaches three minutes and 34 seconds, it'll play and stop at 919. So I don't really want that. And I'll show you what I mean by coming here and then you'll hear it playing. It's a great piece of music, but I cannot repeat it. So that's important to remember. Now, how do you find the music you want? You have to trick YouTube. So what I would say is you click on show ad supported songs. Now this will show songs that are copyrighted. So even if you haven't chosen to have monetization of your videos, an advert will be placed on them. And we all know how to close down a YouTube advert. So don't worry about it too much. Now I need to pick something that is of a similar length to my video. As I said, it needs to be the same length roughly. If I click only show songs of a similar length to this video, you can see I've got three soundtracks that have the keyword in them, ambient somewhere. Right, I want everything to show that it's 14 minutes long. So I could take that out now and just press return and everything that's of the right length will be here, which is copyrighted. Now, now you can go around picking things and hearing what they sound like. That sounds awful. That could be fine. So that's not bad, but you get the idea, guys. So to, to get it to show up what you need, you need to play around a little bit and untick things. As I said, if I just left ambient there, this is all the uh, copyrighted music of a similar length with the word ambient in. So it might work. You just got to get crafty how you find your music. Now, it might take a while to load up and you often get error messages doing this because you're really messing YouTube around. Now that could work for certain types of videos, but it's definitely not going to work for this. So as, as I said, all you have to do is take the keyword ambient out, make sure you got the two boxes ticked and then just press return and you'll find everything. Now I don't want to save this because I've got music. I like on it already. So I'm just going to go over to info and settings and leave that page. So my music, my original music is there already. I think I shouldn't show you any more. You know, learning YouTube is something totally different. And I recommend this is a great way of showing off your photographic work. It's very powerful. And what you will do, you will often get frustrated doing this as I did, but I got there eventually and it really works. Now, how you promote this is entirely up to you. But what I will tell you is that YouTube is the second largest search engine, which it is really, in the world besides Google. It's all owned by Google. So this is a very powerful place for showing off your work. Now, people in this modern world are more likely to watch a video than look at a, a slideshow on a web gallery. So with the right kind of music, you might be losing some revenue with advertising, but with the right kind of music, it's a very powerful way of working. I hope you got something from this, guys. There's going to be two links down below. I might put one above, but I haven't made my mind up yet. As I said, I'm going to put two links down below, one where I wasn't really bothered about aspect ratio and one where I was, this recent one. So, you know, one where I did no work at all and one where I really played around. So, you know, if you want to do something quickly and you can't get to 16 to 9 aspect ratio, don't panic because some images will not fit 16 to 9 aspect ratio if they're in portrait, let's say. So don't worry, it still will work. It's just nicer to have all of that screen filled. That's it, guys. I hope you got something from this. Thank you very much.